What's up guys, in this video, I wanna go over a easy example versus a hard example of evaluating trigonometric functions because we all know this is what the teacher is going to teach and this is what's gonna show up on the test. So it's very important to make sure we understand how to do both of them because one, this is a fundamental expression for us to make sure we can evaluate. And number two, we don't wanna get tricked up when we see something like this and kind of totally forget what to do. So let's go over the basic understand what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve, and then go ahead and apply that to a problem that looks like this. All right, so the first example here is we have the cosine of the angle pi over four, and we need to go ahead, <clears throat> excuse me, and evaluate that. So there's a couple of things that we can go through, and one definition that we can use here is the cosine of theta represents the x coordinate of the point that um, coordinates to that angle on the unit circle. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole unit circle, because we don't need to, because we know, or hopefully we do know, that pi over four is in the first quadrant of the unit circle. And that arc is gonna look really bad, but that's okay. So if we go ahead and memorize the first quadrant, which I tell all my students to make sure you do, you need to know the first quadrant. Um, we can always talk about the unit circle or understanding the other angles in the unit circle in another video, which I will have links for you down below. But if this is going to represent my angle and it's gonna represent pi over four, I need to understand, well, what is this coordinate point here that is on the unit circle um, for the angle pi over four? And that coordinate point is going to be the square root of two over two, comma, square root of two over two. All right, now again, per this definition, the cosine of our angle, which in this case is pi over four, is, is um, equal to the x coordinate of that point on the unit circle. So we have an x coordinate and we have a y coordinate. And we see, actually it doesn't really matter because the x-coordinate is the same as the y-coordinate, but our example in this case is going to be, or our answer in this case, is going to be a square root of two over two. Now let's go and get into the cosecant. Now, there's a couple of mistakes that students will make with this one. The first one is they see C and C, and so they kind of confuse these or conflate these as like they are, they, um, cosecant is the reciprocal function of cosine. That's not the case. Actually, cosecant is the reciprocal of the sine function. All right, so let's go through the definitions here for sine and cosecant, and then we'll talk about this angle. Um, so first thing is the cosine of theta, right, represented the x-coordinate. So the sine of theta represents the y-coordinate. Now again, the cosecant is the reciprocal function of the, sine, of the sine function. So if I have the cosecant of theta, can't write cosecant, cosecant of theta, that's gonna be one over y. All right, now what we need to understand is what the heck is this point on the unit circle? So we only had to deal with the first quadrant here because pi over four was in the first quadrant. But now we need to understand where the heck is negative 11 pi over four. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of practice of graphing some angles in our standard form on the unit circle and see exactly where negative pi over four is going to be. So the important thing is when we're graphing a line, right? You can see I started at this initial um, initial angle is going to be right here, and then our initial side, and then that's our terminal side. So that is what we call the positive direction. And if we're going to go clockwise, that would be the negative direction. Now, I only went pi over four, which was like half of this axis, right? Um, I think of that as like 45 degrees, and like this would be like a 90 degree angle. So the other way that we like to think about this in terms of radians is if this is one fourth, this would be two fourths this would be three fourths and this would be four fourths. Or if you're thinking about that in terms of pi, this would be pi over four, two pi over four or one half pi. This would be three pi over four and this would be four pi over four. Now again, what we're referring to is in the negative direction, right? So this is negative four pi over four. Now again, we need to get all the way to a negative 11 pi. So you can continually count these if you like. Or another thing we can understand, if this is negative four pi over four, then all the way around the circle would be a negative eight pi over four. So like you can just keep on counting them if you want. But if you know that halfway around the circle is pi or four pi over four, all the way around the circle is going to be eight pi over four. So a lot of times what I like to do with students when we have these larger angles is I say, how can I rewrite this in terms of pi? So if I take a negative, let's forget about the actually a negative, let's factor that out. And I have this as 11 pi over four. What I want you to understand is that is the same thing. Uh, what am I doing? I'm writing this down wrong. If I took a negative 11 pi over four, I can rewrite this as a negative eight pi over four. 
right? Which is a revolution plus a three pi over four. Because again, they have the same denominators, right? Eight pi over four plus three pi over four is what? 11 pi over four. And then we have the negative on the outside. Now, again, what do we know about eight pi over four? As we do eight pi over four, that takes us back to that initial starting point that we have. So this is what we call a revolution. It's kind of like redundant. We actually don't really need it. All right. So negative 11 pi over four is going to have the same terminal side as a negative three pi over four. And that's really important because all we're concerned about is the, where the terminal side is, because if we can identify where the terminal side is, we can now identify the point that is going to match up on the unit circle. So even though, yeah, I'm going all the way around and now I need to go three pi over four in that negative direction. So one, two, three. So it's going to be right here. Now I need to figure out well, what the heck is this point, right? Now I mentioned I would say this in other videos, but actually we're going to cover it right now. Here's the thing I want you to recognize. When we did pi over four for this first example, that was this point right here. I want you to see something. Do you guys see how these are kind of connected with these lines? They're what we call symmetrical. They're actually a reflection about the origin. So if I was to reflect this point over here, the points are going to be exactly the same. I know my graph is a little off, but the X and Y coordinates are exactly the same. This is the positive version of square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. If you reflect that about the Y axis, now your X is negative, right? In the second quadrant, X is negative. So now that's a negative square root of two over two comma positive square root of two. And then if you reflect that again over the X axis, now, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to have a negative X as well as a negative Y. So this point is a negative square root of two over two comma a negative square root of two over two. So we've identified what the coordinate point is, but now we need to be able to evaluate for the cosecant of theta equals one over y. So again, we have a the cosecant of negative 11 pi over four, that's gonna equal to a one over y. My y coordinate here is a negative square root of two over two. So let's go ahead and rewrite this out. And so we can do some math because it is a little bit more. So negative 11 pi over four, is simply going to be a one over a negative square root of two over two. Whew, okay, what do we do here? Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's two things. We don't want fractions in the denominator and we don't want radicals in the denominator. But to figure out which one we're gonna want to address first, let's go ahead and address the fraction. Let's get that fraction off the denominator. I don't wanna divide by fractions. And so a lot of times students will get confused with this. So let's just kind of do a, like a simple example. If I had one divided by one half, how can I get rid of this one half in the denominator? And hopefully you recognize if you multiply one half by its reciprocal, which would be a two over one, what is that going to do? That's going to give you a one in the denominator. Now, again, remember to produce what we call equivalent fractions, you have to multiply by the two over the one in the numerator as well in the denominator. So one times two over one is simply just going to be a two and one half times two over one is going to give you one, right? Anytime you take a fraction, multiply it by a reciprocal, you're going to get one. Here's the cool thing. Two divided by one, guys, is just two. I got rid of my fraction. So when we look over here, you say, all right, well, one over two, I know that reciprocal is two over one. That's easy, Mr. Glogan. What's the reciprocal over here? The reciprocal over here is simply just sw swap the numerator and the denominator. So you're going to multiply this by a two. You can put a negative there, divided by a square root of two. And again, just whatever you do in the numerator, make sure you go ahead and do, in, or whatever you do in the denominator, make sure you do in the numerator. So again, this is now going to give us a one. Let's put this little sidebar stuff. Put that over there. I'll put a little box around it so we don't get us confused. Okay, so do, 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 do. All right, that's a little sidebar. I always like to do that when I'm teaching. A little sidebar, just to make sure we kind of understand what we're trying to do from an algebraic kind of perspective. All right, so now what we simply have is this all divides to one. And now I'm left with a negative two over a square root of two. So now we need to get rid of the um, radical, right? We don't have a fraction anymore. That's good. But now we got to get rid of a radical. So how do we get rid of a radical in the denominator? We're going to simply rationalize the denominator. So again, producing that it was equivalent to fractions, we're going to multiply by the square root of two over the square root of two. Why? Because the square root of two times the square root of two is going to be the square root of four. And we can take the square root of four, which now eliminates our radical. So now we're going to get a final answer of negative two squared of two divided by two. And we can simplify this one more time by dividing those out since that's being multiplied by there. And we're going to get a final answer of negative square root of two. That is what the cosecant of a negative 11 pi over four is going to equal. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, in this example, I only went over two examples, but evaluating trigonometric functions is so important. So if you want more examples of me going through how to evaluate for different types of angles and different types of functions, or you want some practice of on your own, check out the links I have for you down below. If you like seeing some easy versus some hard examples, then check out the next video I have for you here. Cheers.